going to now move to members' statements. Members' statements. I members' statements. I recognize the member for Renfrew, Nipissing, Pembroke. Thank you very much, uh, Speaker. Speaker, what do you do when you need health care, but you don't have a family physician? Well, in my riding of Renfrew, Nipissing, Pembroke, you call on the Renfrew County VTAC. That's the Renfrew County Virtual Triage and Assessment Centre. Renfrew County VTAC was born out of the pandemic and since that time has continually demonstrated its value and that it deserves permanent funding. Last Friday at the Renfrew County Paramedic Base, I was able to deliver the good news that permanent funding has been approved. <laughs> Throughout the pandemic and beyond, I heard from Renfrew County residents and healthcare professionals about the importance of this program. The County of Renfrew and its staff have to be given a great deal of credit as not only the designers, but through their paramedics, they're deli the deliverers of this tremendous service. I want to thank them for continuing to be innovative and persistent in bringing health care advancements not only to Renfrew County, but by dis but designing them in such a way that can be adapted to any rural area in the province. I certainly want to thank Premier Doug Ford and, in particular, Health Minister Sylvia Jones, who could not have been more receptive in learning about, understanding, and becoming a strong supporter of VTAC. The people of Renfrew County, particularly those without a family physician, are grateful for this announcement, and as their MPP, I share their gratitude. Thank you. Member statements. I recognize the member for Waterloo. Thank you very much. Uh, this week, my office received a voicemail where a woman just said, Butter at the only grocery store I can walk to is $9 a pound. Just thought you should know, and then she hung up. She sounded hopeless, and I don't know how to give her hope. And I'd like to be able to say that her cost of living is going to improve, but we saw the government's budget last week, and there's no hope there. Food prices in particular have been a pain point for Ontarians. Grocery prices were 11 per cent higher than they were a year ago, Madam Speaker. Wages have wages kept up with the cost of living? No. The government refuses to increase the minimum wage, so low-income workers will continue to struggle more and after inflation. Social assistance programs are providing less help than they did a year ago. And the government's own numbers, your own numbers, show that Bill 23 has failed and their policies will result in fewer new homes being built this year than last year. Between that and no real rent control, housing costs won't get any better. Uh, Madam Speaker, this government wants Ontarians to think that the higher cost of living is a new normal. But this is not normal. Our vision for an Ontario with more opportunity and prosperity is possible and provides more hope for everybody. And it's shameful that this government and their budget don't share in that vision. Member statements. The member for Newmarket Aurora. Thank you. Speaker, I would like to recognize the Women's Centre of York Region, who has been and continues to be a driving force in York Region for more than 45 years. They offer unique programming and services to women who are seeking a positive change in their life. Their goal is to fully support each woman on their personal journey of discovery. Earlier this week, the Minister of Women's Social and Economic Opportunity, the Minister of Labour, Immigration, Training and Skills Development, and myself, we visited the Women's Centre of York Region in Newmarket as they were selected to be part of a $6. million investment over three years as part of the Investing in Women's Future program. This investment will provide a range of flexible services and employment readiness supports for women facing social and economic barriers, including those experiencing gender-based violence and social isolation. In 2021-22, the Investing in Women's Futures program helped more than 1,300 women across the province secure employment, start their own business, or pursue further training or education. I am truly excited to see the positive changes that the Women's Centre of York Region will achieve for women in my riding and throughout York Region. Great seat. Member statements. The member for Toronto, Danforth. 
Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. I, I just want to uh, note that I think I fully understand now what the health strategy is for the Conservative Party. Uh, we saw yesterday with the information about people having their eye examinations reduced. Uh, obviously, people with problems are going to have to pay. And I now can see where the future is when people go to hospital for a hip replacement. Uh, you go in, there'll be a menu at the door. It will say hip replacement surgery covered by OHIP. Anesthetic, extra. Uh, what's it worth to you? Post-surgery recovery. Nurse, prices vary, uh, but for free, we'll pin a note on your gown saying, you just had surgery, we urge you to be cautious. Hallway, free, but to get into a room, you'll have to pay extra. Speaker, that's where we're headed. The sleight of hand, the shell game with this government is they'll cut the services, they'll cut the services, they'll cut the services, you'll get something or other covered by OHIP, but everything else will be like an American hospital where you pay for each juice and each aspirin. You will be skinned. So, Speaker, I urge people to reject the direction this government has taken because we know it will be a disaster for the health care of the people in this province. Thank you. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Kitchener Conestoga. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker, and I'm glad you're sitting down because this is big. It's even Guinness World Records big. After three long years, Mr. Speaker, the Elmira Maple Syrup Festival is back. It is the single largest maple syrup festival in the world, Mr. Speaker. And uh, very glad to uh, to see it return on Saturday, April the first, this weekend. Um, want to talk about a few changes that are being made this year. Uh, historically, um, the, uh, the pancake tent has been downtown. It is moving indoors this year to Lions Hall, uh, right beside the Woolwich Memorial Center at South Street and Snyder Avenue. Um, come meet uh, mascot Flapjack when I try my hand at our world-famous pancake flipping contest, Mr. Speaker, and I think you may have done that once or twice uh, over your years representing a, a great part of, of Woolwich Township. Um, and uh, again this year we're hoping to, uh, to break a record, Mr. Speaker, to see 60 to 70,000 people returning to the streets of Elmira. Uh, I just want to talk a little bit about what, uh, what, what benefit we see to the community. So a lot of the funds uh, raised from, uh, from this uh, fantastic event go to Community Living Elmira. Uh, the Elmira Theatre Company, the Woolwich Sledge Hockey uh, Team, Women's Crisis Services, Waterloo Region, and of course to local schools and more. So our deep, uh, deep thank you to uh, the new chair, Matt Jessup, and the planning committee, and looking forward to this weekend, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> member statements, the member for Hamilton Mountain. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. This Sunday, April 2nd, is World Autism Awareness Day. As many of you know, this topic is close to my heart, so I'm happy to have the opportunity uh, to speak more about this important day. World Autism Awareness Day was unanimously declared to be April 2nd in the United Nations General Assembly in 2008. And this day is more than just awareness. It is about recognition, celebration, and acceptance. People with autism are integral members of our communities, and this year this theme focuses on celebrating the contributions people with autism make to the world, including home, at work, in the arts, and in policymaking. However, people with autism still face challenges and discrimination. It is important to recognize there is still work to do that we need to do, especially as our roles as MPPs. We need to ensure we are building an inclusive, accessible province for everyone. Building an accessible province means ensuring people have access to services. And overwhelming right now, children with autism are not getting the services they need. It was disappointing to see the government did not keep the autistic community in their mind when drafting their budget, as they did not mention autism a single time. So, for this World Autism Awareness Day, I encourage members to think about what they can do to build a more equitable, accessible province for people living with autism and how their work can directly impact people's lives. Thank you very much. Thank you. Member statements? Member for Essex. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We all know 
that guns are being smuggled across the border from the United States into Canada, and that these illegal guns are getting into the hands of gangs. And the gangs are using these guns to go after some of the most vulnerable people in our society. And that's why, Mr. Speaker, we have a strategy. And it's the anti-illegal guns, gangs, and violence reduction strategy brought forward by this government and this premier. And it's funded. It's funded through the budget. Now, we know the NDP don't support this. We know they want to defund the police. But because of the compassionate policies of this government, we actually fund these services. And in the 2023 budget, $13.4 million is continued to provide funding for these police services to go after the illegal guns and go after the gangs. So I want to thank the Minister of Finance for continuing to fund police services and encourage the Solicitor General, please continue to go after the illegal guns and go after the gangs. Woods. Thank you. Next member statement, the member for Ottawa Vanier. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, this weekend we, there will be the official inauguration of the new uh, sugar shack in Vanny. It's special for a number of reasons. It's five kilometers away from downtown Ottawa. This uh, sugar shack of Mizu uh, in Vanny is the only one of its kind in Canada. Unfortunately, in August uh, 2020, there was a criminal uh, uh, fire, uh, arson, and, uh, but fortunately, uh, many um, birch trees, uh, maple trees, were saved. And thanks to the efforts of Madeleine Meillard, uh, the president, and her board of directors uh, could uh, use uh, funds from the city to make sure that the uh, lot was even bigger. So this weekend, we'll be able to uh, taste a number of uh, maple products and participate in a number of activities that are uh, very remarkable. One of my residents, uh, Ms. Madar, is uh, very happy to share how we produce uh, maple products, maple syrup. I'd like to thank a number of uh, volunteers that are integral to this uh, event. And I'd like to welcome everyone to come to Vanier and to taste uh, these maple products and maybe to participate in a few activities with myself. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. Member, Member for Flamborough Glanville. Thank you, and good morning, Mr. Speaker. I'm so pleased to speak about an incredibly selfless and humble individual named Paul Andrew Durden. Paul Durden has been a member of the Kinsman organization for 37 years, and last month he was recognized by the Kin Club in Flamborough with Kinsman's highest honour, which is life membership. Paul has served the Kinsman organization at various clubs throughout the Golden Horseshoe, including Lakeshore, Oakville, Stony Creek, and currently the Kin Club of Flamborough. His dedication to community service has truly been inspiring. He has stepped up to serve the Kinsman Club in so many ways, including accepting various positions on the executive, which requires a lot of time and responsibility. Whenever there was a job to be done, Paul would be there among the first to volunteer to help and never expected any accolades in return. Paul and people who know him say he brings a spirit of positivity and joy wherever he goes. When asked about him, a common response is that Paul is a blessing to have in our lives, and it's an honour to know him and to call him a friend. It was an honour for me to be at the awards dinner to meet Paul and to see him receive the life membership. I want to thank Paul Durden and the entire membership of the Kinsman Club for making Flamborough and the province of Ontario a better place to live. Yeah. Member statements. Okay, that concludes our member statements for this morning.